Hello my friends, this is Legend Arma TV. It's great to see you again. Today we are going to break down the fourth, the current Redeemer, uh, on global servers, uh, which is Laura, in the battle called Tree of Life. The changes, the progression, uh, the requirements, and the gameplay is up ahead. Please enjoy and let's go. First of all, let's talk about the changes to the progression. Now, since Laura has been released, the fourth Redeemer, uh, the previous Redeemers uh, got a boost to the progression. Now, as you know, and before beforehand, uh, Sea of Reflection, which is Nemain, uh, you would get 25% progression per clear. So you only needed four uh, clears to get all these permanent stats. It remains the same. The same remains for the uh, rookie buff uh, for the first five battles. It is 8 revives, auto revives, so uh, you can learn the boss better. When it comes to Balor, Balor uh, has, has gotten an increase of the progression, just like Nemain. Now, whenever you clear Balor, you get 25% progression. Before, it was 2%. Uh, it remains the same for clears. Uh, 8 rev auto revives for the rookies. It really is awesome, so if you haven't still gotten... 100% uh, uh, progression on the Balor, I highly recommend to do it because all these permanent stats and the boost that they provide is huge. When it comes to Bridget, uh, that is tempering the sword, uh, her progression uh, has increased, but only up to 2% per clear. So now, every time you're going to clear this battle, you're going to get 2%. Uh, Make sure to continue doing Bridget here and there. Uh, the stats, uh, just like uh, previous Redeemers, it, it is really good. If we combine all three Redeemers together and all the milestones, the boost of critical and attack is actually enormous. It is essential. So doing Redeemers, at least two of these that are 25%, it literally takes just one week to get all these stats. It is really important, especially for new players, so you can uh, gain more stats, so you can unlock more endgame um, raids. Now, when it comes to Laura, the Tree of Life, the progression is, just like for any new Redeemer, is 1% per clear. So you, get, you gain 4% per week. So it will take uh, almost 6 months to get to 100% on Laura to unlock all these milestones. Also, uh, she's giving a way less attack surplus at 75%, only 100, but um, it's, it's kind of justified because attack surplus uh, is a pretty important stat. Uh, it gives a lot of damage, right? So uh, it, it only makes sense if you just uh, look at the whole picture. If all the redeemers are cleared, right? Uh, and all the milestones are claimed, that is, alone, is 900 attack surplus. That is almost 5% damage boost to your character. And that's it about the progression. Uh, it is really awesome. Make sure to do the Balors, uh, make sure to visit Bridget, and at least try to do uh, one Laura, uh, because uh, the 500 attack and one critical is pretty huge. Alright, before we depart to the battle and enjoy some of the epic gameplay there, uh, let's talk about the requirements real quick. Now, the Tree of Life, as I said before, you can complete just like any other Redeemers four times a week. The attack cap for this battle is 45,500, which a Astero weapon cannot reach, <clears throat> even if you're min-maxed. So, uh, this is going to be quite harsh, and you would need a militia weapon uh, and... Uh, pretty much max synthesized uh, to be able to reach this attack uh, cap. Also, uh, when it comes to the critical rate and the critical resistance that we will need, uh, for the critical resistance uh, to uh, have minimum 3% uh, crit on us, we need 225 critical resistance. And as for the critical rate to have 50% crit on the Laura, we will need 235. 235 right now, just so you know, is a fully min-maxed militia uh, character. And not all of them can, e can even uh, reach this uh, amount of critical. Uh, just like any other Redeemer, usually... 
they are made for the next tier of gear, which for us is going to be 110 in September when we get Ardry. So once people will start uh, getting into the Ardry uh, weapons and the armor, it's obviously going to be way easier to meet uh, these uh, requirements and uh, feel yourself more safe and more comfortable in Laura. So uh, that's about it uh, for the requirements. Let's get to the gameplay. All right, let us begin. Now, the fight against Laura consists of three phases. And the first phase, obviously, is going to be the easiest one of them all. Uh, you see, uh, the biggest thing about Laura is that she is quite slow on the attacks. Very slow. And whenever she finishes one of her combos, one of her patterns, uh, her recovery is very, very long. It basically gives you around 4 to 5 seconds of send back, which is free damage for everybody. So make sure whenever the battle starts, you rush towards the Lura uh, while she's taunting you and pre preparing for the battle. So you deal that send back and make sure you utilize all the damage possible whenever she's in the recovery state. Now, there is a couple of patterns uh, that uh, are needed, uh, need our attention uh, in the first phase of Laura. First of all, let's have a look at the uh, homing spheres. This is one of the most annoying things that Laura can do, and she will do it uh, quite often. Uh, she will have a, a slow wind up right over here. And she will, you will see her casting these uh, blue spheres. Now, after a short delay, all these spheres are going to turn red, and they will start uh, flying towards um, the players. And now, she uh, creates around 8 uh, or 10 spheres, something like that. So, some of the characters might res uh, might have 2 spheres flying towards them. Some of, some of the players might have 1. It's uh, completely different and random. Now, to be able to dodge this thing, obviously, uh, right when uh, the spheres uh, turn red, start dodging. Start dodging, blocking, doing whatever, using your iframes. Uh, obviously, just uh, strafing left to right uh, obviously helps, because uh, the balls, uh, the red balls are uh, homing, so they will be tracking you. So you just need to disengage there. Once you successfully do it, you're golden. Continue fighting the boss. If you happen to get hit by the spheres, you're going to get uh, debuffed, all of your stamina is going to be uh, zapped, and you will be in the tired animation for the next 3 or 4 seconds. So completely vulnerable to any damage, so highly recommend to avoid uh, these spheres. Now, one of the uh, attacks that uh, Laura does, it's a huge string, uh, she does like a vortex, kind of attack, and uh, then she sends a shockwave right there, then she teleports and sends another shockwave, but uh, all of that is quite irrelevant. We all seen shockwaves, we all seen uh, the slashes and how to deal with them you know, with every boss. What's most annoying and will catch you off guard a lot? This trap kick that she does at the end of this pattern, this particular pattern. So if we just um, go back a little bit, uh, she does few slashes, then she does a, sl a slam into shockwave, teleport slam into another shockwave, and after the second slam shockwave, she will do this uh, around herself, a trap kick. Why I call it a trap kick? Because people usually oversee it, and they get hit by it. And since Lura has uh, ungodly requirements, uh, she hits a lot, even on militian people. Now, the next... Uh, pattern right over here is called what I call a time bomb. So uh, Laura, after a little wind up, she does a slam and plants a time bomb on the on the arena. Now this uh, circle uh, might seem like it's a unblockable red attack, but it's not. You can actually dodge and block through it. So using your iframes. Just make sure whenever she plants it, you just uh, distance yourself from it, because whenever it explodes, it deals, uh, well, pretty huge damage. Also, on top of that, whenever she uh, plants it, she reappears, she teleports, and then uh, she attacks a random player with a whirlwind. It tracks and deals some damage. Also, one of the things that I might suggest to do is to learn the patterns and how she uh, what kind of attacks she does as fast as possible. Why? Because all of these attacks that you will see in the first phase, she will be using in her KO sequence. 
and uh, whenever whenever she does the KO, if any of these hits hit any players, they will be KO'd and killed. So uh, start practicing doing that uh, as soon as possible. Here you can see the homings. As you see, I'm just dodging and using the block. Uh, then she teleports and sends the purple shockwave. That shockwave uh, covers almost whole arena. Even with high um, particle effects turned on in the settings, sometimes you might not see it. So be careful. One of the reasons you always want to stand as close as possible to the Laura is because she has this uh, particular pattern that we're going to talk about, which is called Ultra Slam. Now, she uh, does, uh, she can do uh, different types of slashes, and then she does this huge Ultra Slam on top of that. Obviously, you want to block it because it deals damage, but the reason why you want to uh, stay close to her is because whenever she does it, she creates it an outer circle. Now, you can block and dodge this thing, however, uh, uh, since... Uh, she is doing this attack, she will be in the recovery state. So this is free sandbag. This is the opportunity to deal a lot of damage. So make sure that you're always standing close to Laura whenever she does the Ultra Slam, so you have this uh, opportunity uh, for the free damage. If you are outside and if you get hit by the circle after the Ultra Slam, uh, you will be debuffed, uh, your stamina will be zapped, just like with the homing spheres, so uh, make sure you don't get caught by that. Uh, she will be doing the Ultra Slam quite, quite often. Uh, this uh, attack is um, kind of... kind of similar to what Nimane has whenever she does the helicopter, so you just have to uh, block the first attack and then just go ham and just uh, send back her to oblivion and deal enormous amounts of damage there. That's pretty much it about the phase one of Laura. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, you should just be strafing from the uh, uh, homing spheres. Uh, watch out for the uh, trap kick that she does at the end of her combos, and uh, watch out for the ultra slam. Make sure you're standing close uh, to the boss so you can do uh, free DPS. As you can see in the preview, after each pattern that Alora does, she has an incredible uh, recovery uh, moment. So uh, this allows you to uh, deal your damage and just be completely safe. Now, once, once uh, Laura's HP is dropped to 8.5 bars, she will transition to the second phase. Now, second phase is going to start with the tentacles attacking you. And uh, whenever it comes to the tentacles, and they will be uh, chasing you down uh, throughout the rest of the fight, there are three different patterns that might happen include uh, that include the tentacle attacks. First of all is the slam attack. You will see uh, on the ground, you will see that the some portion of the ground is being uh, electrocuted. That means that uh, the tentacle is about to do a slam right there. Once the tentacle does the slam, it deals damage if you're close and you didn't do any use any iframes, and then it sends a shockwave as well. You can dodge through it, you can block it, whatever. Uh, the tentacles do uh, two slams, so two different tentacles. Make sure you're dodging all that. If you somehow get caught by any of these uh, tentacle attacks, you will be debuffed. But we'll talk about it a little bit later, uh, once we uh, talk about the other attacks. Now, how to figure out that the tentacle attacks are coming? You will see Laura uh, flashing purple right over here in the preview. That means she's going to disappear and the te tentacles will attack. Now, we talked about the slam. Um, now we're going to be talking about the sphere. The sphere is a homing, and it will be uh, going towards uh, any random player. So whenever it uh, uh, connects with the ground, it will uh, does it will do an explosion that deals damage, and it will uh, add a pool uh, of electricity there. After a short delay, that pool of electricity is going to explode, sending a shockwave. So make sure you're dodging that. After that, uh, after the first sphere, uh, Laura will reappear. Does uh, she will do three attacks and disappear again? And the second tentacle is going to send out uh, another sphere. So two slams uh, with the tentacles and two spheres with the tentacles. Uh, whenever she just disappears, uh, look at the tentacles and see where the uh, orb is coming. 
If it's targeting you, just make sure that upon contact you're using iframes so you dodge it. And then uh, watch out and time it well whenever it explodes so you dodge the shockwave. And do uh, repeat the same for the second sphere. The third tentacle attack that you will encounter, and uh, just like uh, I said it with the uh, spheres and the slams, uh, the wind up for Laura, she just flashes uh, purple, uh, you will know that the tentacles are attacking, is the laser. Now, uh, the first tentacle and then the second tentacle does the laser. The laser itself deals damage, and then they leave a trail which uh, explodes uh, in, uh, in time. So make sure you're dodging the laser. If you're far away, you'll be safe. Uh, just uh, look where the trail is going to be and make sure you don't get hit. Just track... Wh whenever uh, tentacles come into play, uh, pay attention to the tentacles. Laura is going to disappear, so you won't need to worry about it until uh, tentacles are done with their pattern. So uh, make sure you don't get hit by any of that. If you got hit by the uh, tentacle uh, slam, the tentacle uh, spheres, and tentacle laser, you will be debuffed. You will be debuffed with a thing called Curse of Life. And that thing is quite, quite nasty. So, uh, what it does, for 20 seconds, it increases the damage that you will be receiving from all the attacks, all the upcoming attacks, by 20%. That is a lot. Uh, Laura herself already dealing, uh, like, murderous damage with each attack, especially if she crits. And on top of that, you will receive 20% more. So, uh, whenever you're debuffed, uh, make sure you're playing extremely safe. And if that wasn't enough, Curse of Life also decreases the amount of health that you regen with any sources. Succubus Fang, your class-specific uh, sustain abilities, HP potions, and so on, by 30%. So it works kind of like Neem's Poison, so uh, using your HP potions is probably going to be a waste because they will be healing way less. So make sure you don't get hit by any of the tentacle attacks or uh, you will receive this debuff and it's going to be quite, quite uncomfortable and annoying. Now let's get back uh, to the start of the second phase. After the tentacle uh, do the slams, after the intermission, uh, usually Laura is going to use the next ability, and uh, the wind up is very, very noticeable right here. She will be flashing purple, and she will have this aura around her. That is the signal that the Dance of Life is starting. This is a um, attack, a pattern that is uh, quite similar to Neem's uh, Gates of Babylon, uh, Balor's uh, uh, lava walls and uh, Bridget's uh, Reign of Fire. Here you just need to survive, and you need to memorize the patterns. You have to me you have to memorize where you have to stand. Now, for the second phase, whenever the Dance of Life happens, make sure you're rushing towards the middle, but you don't stay in the middle. You stay a little bit down left, where um, where exactly I am standing right now. The pattern right here is as follows. Down left, then down left again, so you're just standing the first two shockwaves, you're just standing there. Then you move to the middle for the third one, then you come back down left, wait here, and then you move to the middle again. So five shockwaves in total, and uh, just try to remember that you will have enough time to actually uh, react and follow others if you were um, not familiar with this thing yet. So you will have time. If you get caught by these, uh, they don't instantly kill you. However, they deal huge damage. They also stagger you and uh, you start panicking. Uh, you just get lost and you're probably going to just end up dying in this dense floor. So uh, this particular pattern is actually quite easy to uh, deal with. Just memorize uh, the pattern for the second phase once again. Down left, mid, down left, and then mid again. Uh, super simple. And lastly, for the second phase, the most terrifying thing that is happening in every Redeemer is the one-hit KO attacks. Now, uh, in the second phase, uh, Laura is gonna do a wind-up and the camera is gonna focus on her. So you will know that she's preparing the KO attack. As you can see in the preview right over here, it focuses on her uh, she raises her hand, then she teleports. Now, let's look at the KO, um, the example, uh, when I am the target. 
This is actually quite terrifying. So she disappears and then uh, she will ad attack a random person. In this particular preview, it's me. She does one slash, then another slash. Then comes the third slash after a little delay right here. And another slash, so that's four total. Then she does a vortex attack right over here. That's the fifth attack. And an ultra slam. Ultra Slam also uh, sends a shockwave, so make sure you don't get hit by that, obviously. Then she reappears and uh, attacks a random person again with two more heads. Then she teleports again, once again. And after a little delay, she plants a time bomb. That time bomb, if you get caught by that, even when she, uh, when the time bomb uh, explodes, it will prompt the KO as well. And then she reappears again, and after a little delay, uh, she tracks the target, so uh, you need to iframe that pretty well. She will do a whirlwind attack to finish the sequence. So in total, uh, that's a lot of attacks in the, in the KO sequence. If you get hit by any of them, you're gonna get KO'd. So, if you're not the initial target, make sure that the first uh, six hits that she does right there, uh, you, uh, you're you completely safe if you're not the target. Just uh, walk away and just chill. Once she does the uh, this uh, whirlwind hit right here into the ultra slam with the shockwave, she will disappear. Now, you never know who's going to be the target, so be prepared for it. Time it well, you will have some time. Oof, that butt is lewd. And uh, make sure that uh, you are ready for the next two hits. Then she teleports, as we talked about it. Uh, she uh, plants a time bomb over here. It's an initial attack itself. So uh, you have to iframe that as well. And then you have to uh, run away from the time bomb before it explodes. And then she reappears at the random target once again and does the whirlwind. That's a lot of attacks. It's quite, quite terrifying. People get caught a lot by this KO. So just try to manage your stamina uh, wisely and uh, work on your timings. Actually, the KO on the second phase is way harder uh, than the KO on the third phase because it's, it's going to be a little bit different. But we're going to talk about it a little bit later. And that's about it for the second phase, pretty much. Uh, up until four bars, uh, you will just uh, just keep in mind that from the first phase uh, that we talked about, the homing spheres, the trap kick, the ultra slam, watch out for all of these, uh, and uh, the time bomb, obviously, uh, the attacks will be added three different types of uh, tentacle attacks on top of that, that debuff you. The KO sequence and the dance, uh, the life of dance, the life of dance, the dance of life, goddammit. So uh, they will be all used together uh, in the second phase, plus the regular patterns, but uh, there is now no really, uh, not really much to talk about there. And once Laura reaches four bars, there's going to be an intermission right over here, and she will disappear. Uh, she will be invincible during that. And uh, this is where the third phase uh, begins. But first, before the third phase, there is going to be an intermission right over here. The three tentacles are going to attack once again. And they will grab these, uh, I don't know, ballistas or whatever that is, and they will throw them on the ground. Ballistas are going to stuck in the ground and they will send a massive shockwave. First and foremost, these shockwaves deal murderous damage. Murderous damage. So make sure you dodge them. You cannot allow to get hit by that. And uh, the tentacles are going to throw three uh, ballistas in a row. One from the uh, far side, and then one in the middle, and one uh, close to the end of the arena. You want to stand uh, as... Uh, far as possible here, so you can react to uh, all the all three of the ballistas landing on the ground. Now, what happens after that? Uh, you will have like two seconds to hide behind the ballista, and um, Laura is going to initiate a huge explosion right over here, uh, destroying all the ballistas and dealing massive damage on the whole arena. So, if you are standing to the left, just like these unfortunate guys. Boom, you're just gonna die instantly. This thing just kills instantly. 
So, uh, at the end of all that, on top of this, uh, this whole intermission, uh, she will also land and send a super fast going shockwave. That shockwave deals like 10,000 damage flat, so uh, dodge that as well. After that, the third phase begins, and um, Alora is going to be in a sandbag mode for quite a while, like almost 10 seconds. So uh, use that to deal all this free damage. As you can see, I'm just flooring like crazy. Now let's talk about the last phase specifically. Uh, in the last phase, uh, most of the patterns will remain, uh, the tentacles and so on, the ultra slam. However, some of the attacks are going to gain some extensions. Uh, we're not going to um, particularly talk about them much, uh, because uh, they're not too threatening. Uh, for example, uh, one of the attacks where she sends the shockwave, she'll also send another shockwave on top of that. And one of the other patterns, which is the time bomb, the time bomb, whenever it's going to explode, it will send a shockwave that will damage as well. So uh, <clears throat> when it comes to the regular patterns uh, in Laura, there is, as I said, nothing much to talk about. However, in the third phase, uh, we are going back to the uh, Dance of Life. The Dance of Life pattern is going to change here, uh, specifically on the last phase. Now, um, the pattern here is as follows. Uh, whenever it starts, go to the middle instantly, and then move down left. After that, go back to the middle, and then stand for in the middle for the third and fourth uh, shockwaves, and then down left again. And that's it. So, five shockwaves once again uh, for this sequence. Uh, and the pattern is a little bit different than from the phase one. So middle, down, left, middle, middle, down, left. It's, uh, as I said, uh, just like the first uh, Dance of Life, uh, this pattern is quite easy. Uh, it takes not so much time to learn uh, where you need to stand. Uh, and, and honestly, if you just uh, want to learn it as fast as possible, just uh, memorize where you have to stand from the get-go. And then... Uh, your brain will process where the other shockwaves are going to be, so you will know exactly where you need to go. Plus, also, uh, there is a delay between the shockwaves, so you will have time, even if you, uh, you know, if you stalled for a second, if you froze for a second, uh, you'll still have time to escape uh, and go uh, to the safe spot right there. And lastly, uh, the final pattern that we're going to talk about here in this lore guide is going to be the one-hit KO once again, but this time we're going to talk about it um, as a specific uh, sequence uh, for the last phase. So it's unique for the last phase. Now, as you remember, the wind up for this, sh the camera focuses on Laura, so you will know that the KO is coming. First and foremost, th what is happening with this thing is that uh, whenever she disappears, she sends a shockwave. But it is not a uh, your regular, ordinary shockwave right here. This shockwave is extremely dangerous. If you get hit by this thing, uh, first of all, it will zap your stamina instantly for uh, three, two, three, four seconds, something like that. It will also apply a debuff on you. The debuff increases your stamina cost by like n over 9,000. So you will run out of stamina almost instantly. So you need to avoid this debuff at all cost. If you're not going to be the initial target for the KO, you will be safe. It will be pretty much, you'll be pretty much fine. Now, let's look uh, at the KO and how it looks, uh, how it operates in the last phase. So, after the shockwave has been administered, uh, she reappears at the random target, and she will track that target until the end. Let's look at it. So, she reappears, one slash, and then another slash. So, that's two. Then, a slow, slow delay a third slash, and then another one, so that's four. Then it's a fifth one, so five attacks in a row. Then she does the Whirlwind, the Vortex, and into Ultra Slam, that sends, that sends the Shockwave. And on top of all that, she does another Ultra Slam, that sends another Shockwave, so two Ultra Slams into two Shockwaves, and finishes the sequence with the trap kick. Now, most of people get caught by the trap kick, just like we talked about it in the phase one, but here it is fatal, because it is uh, connected, it is linked to the KO 
So if you get uh, caught by this uh, trap kick, and a lot of people do, uh, you will prompt the KO and you will die. That's it. This KO is way more simple because it eliminates uh, random targets uh, being targeted. So uh, it, it, she will only focus on one person. Uh, so the only thing that you might be caught if you're not the target is the shockwaves from the Ultra Slams. So uh, just uh, memorize how many attacks is there. So five attacks. Um, use your iframes as, uh, as much as you can and dodge all these attacks. And if you successfully... Uh, survive the KO sequence, you will be rewarded with a very nice uh, 5 to 7 seconds of a send back, so more free damage on the boss. That's it guys, that's uh, the whole uh, guide uh, for Laura, all the specific things that are happening in this uh, fight. Remember, Laura deals murderous damage. However, she is very slow, and she, is, she takes a lot of time to recover after each string. So utilize that time uh, to send back her to deal as much, as much damage as possible. Dodge all the tentacle attacks, make sure you don't get debuffed, watch out for the KOs, and memorize the Dance of Life. It's a very fun uh, Redeemer battle, I really enjoy it a lot, and honestly, I think uh, this is the first Redeemer where I learned almost all the patterns pretty, pretty quickly. I wish you good luck, and um, just like any other Redeemers, keep on damaging Laura until uh, until the last bar, and uh, once she reaches the uh, bar one, uh, she will be defeated. Right over here, you are the victor. Now let's talk about the rewards. Obviously, besides the uh, stats that you get from the milestones, there is also some uh, good stuff that you can get from doing Redeemers. Now, obviously, if you remember, whenever you clear a Redeemer, you get a, a specific box from it. Before, uh, it would drop level 70 accessories, uh, 3 stars that you could dismantle for Spirit Magic Powder, but it was super lame, and also you would get gold uh, coin pouches that would contain uh, from 150k to like 1 million. Now, both of these have been removed, the accessories and the gold pouches, and they have been replaced with elemental shards. You gain five elemental shards per, uh, per box, a different kind of it, there, there are four kinds that you can dismantle and uh, get uh, more materials for the intermediate element stones. You can also get element and intermediate element stones from the Redeemer box. The same remains... Uh, just like it was. The Abyssal Shards, uh, Grade 1, and the Mysterious Shards, uh, Grade 1, plus the Emotes. That's it. Now, let's talk about the Exchange Shop. If you uh, noticed, there is a, a new tab, uh, which is called a Mission Seal, and uh, these seals will allow you to purchase stuffs like AP, Unstable Enhancement Rune, Intermediate Element Stone, uh, a new Seraphic Feathers Brooch, that is going to be a better uh, Redmond Brooch, and this um, Secret uh, mysterious item. Now, let's talk about it real quick. First of all, for now, you don't need to worry about it, as of now, because you will only unlock these mission seals once you clear Laura 100 times. Once you clear Laura 100 times, you will start gaining uh, seals, depending on your performance, uh, which was uh, just like for uh, the Redeemer seals, uh, whenever you uh, clear the battle, you get one seal. Whenever you deal uh, 20%, 35%, you get two and three. Now, uh, what's so good about the Seraphic Feathers Brooch? Uh, it uh, gives you extra crit on top of Red Moon Brooch. So it is uh, technically a better and will be a best-in-slot uh, brooch for you uh, to go for. However, if you have a Red Moon Brooch, you can actually uh, farm a less of the mission seals in the future and purchase yourself a of deities and heroes uh, item, whatever. This this piece of paper. What does this piece of paper do? It is a material that you can combine with your existing Red Moon Brooch. This one. You can combine them together and you can create a Seraphic Feathers Brooch. Uh, it is uh, highly recommended to do so if you uh, don't really care and you didn't invest too much, uh, you know, too much stuff into your bridge, which is stars, uh, which is uh, wish and meaningful enchant scrolls because they're uh, quite expensive. Then I would probably farm more and just get a new bridge. 
But if you have like a significant passion, two-star Redmond Bridge that has been infused, uh, you can actually just use your uh, Redmond Bridge, uh, purchase the Deities and Heroes paper, and go to Brand and create yourself, craft yourself the Seraphic Feathers Bridge. Now, as I said, wording. All the infusions, all the stars, all the scrolls that have been applied to the Red Moon Bridge, uh, if you use it with this item to create the Seraphic Feathers Bridge, none of the mentioned before is going to transition to the new bridge. You just, you're just going to get a clean bridge. So if you don't mind uh, losing all that, like infusions and so on, go for it. If, if, if you're not, then, well, you will have to think, uh, what do you want to do here? Honestly, the Seraphic Feathers Bridge, I believe, uh, should use a, a little bit of a boost, maybe like uh, give it an extra speed and critical on top, because on, just providing one critical from the Redmond Bridge is it's quite punishing, honestly, because it, 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 I know it's min-maxing, right? But the amount of um, the amount of work that you need to do and the amount of things that you've put on your Redmond Bridge before, it's going to be worthless. It's going to be it's just going to disappear. So the choice is yours here. And now let's quickly talk about the future changes that is going to be uh, done to the progression and to the gameplay in Redeemer specifically. Now, uh, in KR, uh, they actually implemented that already. I'm not sure if we're going to get that. Uh, well, we technically should. But as follows. The changes are going to be like this. For the milestones, uh, before it was 1, 25, 50, 75, and 100%. It's going to be changed to 1, 5, 40, 70, and 100%, respectively. And also, they are going to change, they're going to move some of the boosts that you're getting later in the progression to the early progression. So, uh, claiming the essential stats uh, from the first, like, five uh, clears is going to be huge. Uh, for example, if you can, uh, as you can see, uh, before, uh, at 1%, you will be gaining 1 critical and 500 attack. Now, it, you're going to get 2 critical and 500 attack at 1%, and then right after that, at 5%, you're going to get another 2 critical and um, HPs. Now, obviously, uh, through each Redeemer, which is Neem, Balor, Bridget, it's going to be a little bit less on the attack surplus. But the overall uh, attack surplus and HPs, uh, but overall uh, the critical and the attack or magic attack is going to be uh, moved uh, earlier in the progression. So you will unlock the stats faster. This is really great. And uh, when it comes to the gameplay thing, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be kind of salty about it, but um, in the KR they've implemented this thing. They change the minimal damage contribution that you have to do in Redeemer's Battle. Just like it's 1% uh, in RAR or 7% in regular raids, Redeemers will also have a minimum damage contribution. You will have to do at least 2% damage in a Redeemer run to be able to claim your progression and your rewards. So if you fail to do so, if you do less than 2%, uh, you will be uh, stripped from the AP, gold, XP, uh, the, uh, what is it? The progression, obviously, which is the, the most important thing about Redeemers, and the box. So technically, you're just going to fail the Redeemer for yourself. However, the number of the departures is not going to be deducted, so uh, you will still be able to do as many as you can, uh, but uh, I highly recommend to start practicing and make sure that uh, you can at least do 2%. I know it sounds quite, uh, quite harsh, um, and I'm not sure if we're actually going to get that, but uh, I think Kiar did, so uh, we should technically get that as well. So... Please keep on training, and remember that the rookie, uh, whenever you have the rookie buff, you don't need to worry about it. It's just like the goddess guidance. But once you don't get the rookie buff, make sure you do 2%. That's it. And that's it for today, covering Laura, the fourth redeemer, in the battle called Tree of Life. This battle, uh, for me personally, compared to Bridget, is way easier. Because uh, Laura is way slower, 
and uh, she has a very long recovery that allows huge sandbags. However, since it's a uh, new redeemer with the uh, super huge ultra requirements, obviously you're going to uh, receive a lot of damage there. So keep on practicing, uh, keep on getting better, make sure you do progress and uh, claim your permanent stats from this redeemer, and I hope this guide was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching! This was Legend Arma TV. Subscribe to YouTube channel, join my Discord, stop by Twitch as always. If you want to support me directly, please do so on the Patreon page. Guys, please be safe, I love you all 3000, and I see you very, very soon.